Share your love and creativity for baking. Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. Last week in the semi-final challenge, Renuka, Moletwa and Malisha were put to the ultimate test by baking outdoors on an open fire. In the end, the heat was too much for Mel and she became the last contestant eliminated from the competition. Now for the finale at Vatokluf Wine Estate in Somerset West. I am super nervous for the final challenge. I think it's going to be a mixture of savory, sweet, maybe it's all about bakes. I really don't know. Getting to the top two has been such a journey and I'm so happy to be here and it's so surreal. And I am so excited. Today's the day someone gets crowned the taste master. Hi, judges. Hi, ladies. This is it guys. It is the grand finale of the Taste Master SA season five. And today we will finally be crowning a winner. <laughs> Renuka, you estimated that you would be out in what? Episode three? <laughs> so how does this feel? Uh, it's just been such an amazing journey. I've learned so much from the master classes and just getting your feedback on my food has really boosted my confidence. So I'm just grateful to be here. So excited to be beside Muletua. And yeah, we're gonna bring it today. Muli, your journey in this competition has been very up and down. So how do you feel about getting to the finale? I feel so amazing. I feel so proud of myself. It has literally been such a grueling journey to get here. And I think coming out of every single elimination, my emotions were up, down, up, down. And this is, it's nice to be ending off on a high, no matter the outcome. You both have faced many difficult challenges to get to this place. And I'm so happy to say that you have both proven that you have what it takes to make big things happen. This is Waterkloof Wine Estate, one of the most beautiful farms in the Western Cape and home to the amazing award-winning restaurant Chorus. This is where our Tastemaster will be crowned. And along with that title, the winner will earn themselves 150,000 rand in cash courtesy of Capitec Business to further your career because better never rests. Along with the money, the winner will also receive 100,000 rand to spend with Samsung 100,000 rands worth of KitchenAid equipment and a blast chiller from Electrical Industries Online worth 65,000 rand. This beautiful restaurant is owned by one of the most popular chefs in South Africa and he is today's guest judge. Please give a huge welcome to Chef Baptist Basot. Oh, wow. Good morning, Miletwa, Renuka. Welcome to Chorus. Thank you. I come from a very traditional Afrikaans family where food was always uh, important to us, especially over the big days, birthdays, Christmas, Easter, any celebration was sort of um, uh, elevated through cooking. And uh, I suppose I found myself spending more time in the kitchen than being interested in anything else. So it was a very natural thing for me to progress and become a chef. Chorus is a place that celebrates food. It celebrates our space in the Helderberg on this beautiful mountain. Uh, from here we've got majestic views over Feinbos and Vineyards and our False Bay. And uh, in this restaurant we, we choose to bring sort of incredible flavours together from our region. And I think it's the perfect place for the contestants to have the final episode, you know. My style of cooking is very simple. Uh, I like South African food, but firstly I'm South African. I really enjoy sort of fresh local seasoned ingredients. And we always ask ourselves, how is this dish uh, South African when it hits a restaurant menu? It's important for us to celebrate the heritage through what we do. I like to cook food that I can understand. I like to cook food that celebrates my heritage as a South African. I like food that has sort of a sense of time and place. So for example, at the moment in the Cape, we're going into winter, so it's hunting season soon, so we'll have game on the menu, uh, we'll start foraging for mushrooms and those sort of things. And I think the most important part of, of how I like to look at food is 
I love food and sort of triggers a little bit of nostalgia in what we do. Uh, nostalgia is probably one of the, the, the most important flavor senses, food that, that we cook from memory, to the kind of stuff our mothers cooked and our grandmothers cooked. I think that's, it's important to, to celebrate those things. I get to judge the finale, which I'm very excited about. Uh, I'm also very excited to see what the contestants uh, would, have, would have mastered over the last few weeks and how their techniques would have developed uh, in the competition. And obviously hanging out with Fritz and Zola is always fun. Uh, I would like to see people cook um, from their hearts firstly, food that they're comfortable with, but also celebrate their heritage and their South Africanness through what they do. My advice would be stay calm, remain focused, taste everything and make sure it's delicious because we're going to judge you on what everything tastes like. From these finalists at this level, I expect incredible flavors. Batis, in the industry, you're very highly respected and your work is amazing. But I think what you're most well known for and what we love you the most for is how you've managed to take your heritage and incorporate it into your bakes and all your menus. So talk us through that process. Sure. Well, it's, it's quite simple for me. I'm Afrikaans and Afrikaans people bake a lot. Uh, you know, little things that I love, the nuances of South African cuisine is, for example, when the English came to South Africa and we were colonized by them, they have afternoon tea. But we said, no, we're going to do it in the morning <laughs> and we do it well. So those are little cultural nuances for me, it's extremely important. It also allows me to explore my fellow South African's cultures mm. and the nuances of their cultures. And I think that's a wonderful thing about South African cuisine and baking, mm. is that we're also different, uh, but it gives us this wonderful white palette of things to explore. You know, no, there's nothing wrong with a flippant taste never right? No? <laughs> it's a wonderful place to visit for inspiration. Absolutely. <laughs> and this challenge is all about who you are, where you come from, and where you're going. Okay. In order to make big things happen, you need to dream big. So let me set the scene for you. You've just opened your brand new cafe. You usher us in through the doors. You give us a seat at a beautiful table. We look up. We see a menu of specials that you've written with all the delicious treats that are available from your kitchen. That is what we want you to manifest for this final challenge. You must create five signature items that will stand proud on your dream cafe menu. We want you to show us who you are as a baker and where you come from. It must capture your heritage. What you do is entirely up to you, but we want to see two savory items, two sweet items, and the fifth, either. And remember to use your tried and trusted royal baking powder. Since we are in Battis' territory, Battis, please let them know what your expectations are for this particular challenge. Of course. Now, the standards are high because in South Africa in recent years, wonderful bakeries have popped up everywhere. And as a nation, we now appreciate sourdough more than any sort of shop board supermarket rolls, to be honest with you. So, I would like to see baking that is technically correct, that is culturally applicable to who you are and celebrates your, your personality and your heritage. And lastly, it must please just be flippant delicious. <laughs> Right, here's how it's going to work. We're gonna head back to the Tastemaster kitchen for the very last time. You will do all the prep for your five bakes. Once completed, we will pack it all up and head back here to Chorus at Waterkloof. Here, you will be given the time to do your final touches before you present your final five dishes. Mm. Got it? Yes. Right, let's go and get baking. Next up, Renuka and Moletwa head back to the Tastemaster kitchen for their final bake. From our family to yours, the Tastemaster SA, made with love by Clover. I'm feeling really nervous about today's challenge. It's a very long bake, but I have all the energy all the passion, all the motivation to get through this bake. This is not the same Renuka that you saw in episode one. I have evolved as a baker. I am not afraid to take risks in the kitchen. I have gone through elimination challenges that I thought that I was gonna go home and then I got the best dish of the day. The final two. I need you to take a deep breath for me. Take it all, oh, you can breathe out. <laughs> Take it all in. <laughs> Take it all in. This is the final time that you will be baking in the Tastemaster kitchen. You will have five hours to complete all of your prep and your bakes for your five menu items. Once we arrive at the finale location, you will be able to reheat, garnish, and finish all decorations, but you will not be able to bake any further. 
Okay, it's time to make big things happen. Your time starts in three, two, one. Get baking. Good luck. Good luck, ladies. I am super proud of where I am today. I think it's the hardest thing I've ever done and obviously also the hardest challenge in the Taste Master Kitchen so far. But I'm here to give my best. So in terms of my culture, I am Tswana and in my experience, I have not actually experienced any desserts and that. So I'm going very South African. That's how I'm basically going about it, is really just trying to encompass all of South Africa's cultures. So the way I'm using royal baking powder is within my shoe pastry and in my brownies. I think putting it in the shoe pastry, I've made shoe pastry before, and royal baking powder has really helped it to hold the stability. So I have got the gulab jamun cake in the oven, which is, I need to check it now. I take the gulab jamun cake out of the oven. It is springy, moving away from the bunton, which means that it is cooked. I am so pleased. It's a beautiful bunt shape and it is golden in color. So what I have in my bowl is crafin dough. A crafin is a mix between a croissant and a muffin. I have a few spices in there, cardamom, allspice, cinnamon. The plan is to make it a sister style crafin. The way I'm incorporating my colorful cream milk is into my crafin dough. And I think it's just gonna add like a creaminess to it. Making crafin dough is a extremely time consuming process, so I really need to time myself well. Uh, into the oven now, I will do the sour cream cake uh, with the pecans. And then I will start with the chocolate cupcakes next. Hey, Molly. Molly. Hello. You're Afrikaans, you'll know this word. It starts with a K. Ko Koro. That's Koro Kumfai. Yeah, I'm trying to do a take on that. Great. For what? Yeah. What is it for? Um, so I'm trying to make a more Spoliki inspired like bagel. Nice. With that and Burenkas cheese and some smoked snook. Wow. Sure. What a with combo. That. Renuka, what's your mood during this final bake? How are you feeling? A lot of mixed feelings all at once, but I think once I get into my zone, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be okay. My savory is a savory scone. It's gonna have coriander and chili and onion and that in it. Oh, coriander. Um, and then I'm gonna split them open and then put a paneer buji. Do you know paneer buji? Paneer the cheese, I know. Yeah, but what, buji? Is a, what is a buji? So buji is you fry up onions and ghee with spices, peppers and tomatoes, and then you crumble the paneer into it. Oof. Yum! It's like a spiced egg that we have, but then ah. in my cafe, I want to have a vegetarian option. We've got some very ambitious plans mm. going on over there. Totally different concepts, yeah. which I think is good because their personalities are very different mm. and the styles in which they bake are very different. Mm. And I think they are both digging into what has worked for me up to this point. Very true. And they're playing into that. Mm -hmm. Good sound strategy for me. Absolutely. Winning the Taste Master would mean so much to me because I feel like I struggle a bit with imposter syndrome. Sometimes I doubt my skills and I think winning it would be so much validation and it would also mean that I get to really focus on my business. They say you should leave a little sparkle wherever you go. So I hope that I've left some sparkle in the Taste Master kitchen, but also I'm taking the Taste Master sparkle with me. I have an awesome family, a big family. I have a late sister who passed away from COVID three years ago. And I have an elder sister who's actually a home baker. I have a brother, my mum and my husband, lots of nieces and two nephews. Looking back at my Taste Master journey, I did not think that I would actually be in the semi-finals or the finals. The thing that I learned about myself during the Taste Master journey was that I am adaptable to the situation. I can work well in a team and I can produce good bakes during the time constraints. Oh, I'm very proud of Renuka being her mum, and I thought I'm also proud of myself. I think her baking is excellent. The flavor and spice for her is really very important. I think Renuka has grown a lot during the competition because it's just made her more confident and she's tried a lot more new recipes that she would not necessarily try at home. 
So my sister is a brilliant cook, an excellent baker. She pays a lot of attention to detail and uh, she keeps our appetites going. She's always putting flavor and taste into her baking. She's very good at what she does and she's very passionate about what she does. Winning Tastemaster Season 5 would be an absolute dream come true. It will be validation that I should start my own home-based bakery and it will be such a great achievement. Plus, I get bragging rights. Auntie Renuka, I'm really proud of you. I, whenever you bake, it always makes me full of joy and happiness. So go Auntie Renuka. We're 100% behind you. And even if you don't win the competition, you're still a winner in our eyes. Renuka, I wish her all the best. She will do fantastically well. We know that you will excel in this competition. Go Team Renu, we love you! Contestants, one hour down, four hours remaining to complete your prep and your bikes. Yep. Yep, time's ticking. <laughs> I'm definitely going to elevate the cupcakes. Coffee and chocolate is something I love, so I decided I'll uh, mix them together. So it seems that Molly and I are both making quiche today. I really hope that my crust is cooked completely and that the filling is rich and creamy. Hey Molly. Hi. So uh, why did you decide to make coral comfort instead? Just to fit in with the whole, uh, what would you call it, theme, hey? Yeah, exactly. And, and that's going with your snook and your moss wolliki. Yes, I need to actually smoke my snook now. I'm going to cure it um, for about 20, 30 minutes with some raisins, and then I am going to smoke it. Yes. Oh, nice. I think that's a good way to do it. And that looks legit, by the way. Thank you. It's the first time I make it. Oh, really? <laughs> so, yeah, so this would be my grape element for the most polikis. No, that's good. I think it's essential to incorporate it if you're going to call it most poliki. There you have it. <laughs> Done. I get the quiche dough out of the fridge and then I start patting it into the quiche tin and then I realize that I'm doing something wrong. So I quickly roll it out and then I place it into the quiche tin making sure I get into the grooves of the quiche tin. After I've done with this, I have to make my shoe pastry which is on the go. Uh oh! Hey now! The liquid for my shoe is boiling over, flames everywhere, but at least it didn't do too much damage and I don't have to start again. I add some flour, royal baking powder and salt into my shoe liquid, mix it up until it dries. Contestants, you are officially halfway through your bake. It's looking good, guys. Yep, bagel's going. What's in your water? In my water, I have some maple syrup and some bicarb in there. So I'm gonna take it out now. Yeah, then you'd glaze them and then bake them. Are you topping them with anything? Uh, with some sesame seeds and a bit more aniseed. Okay. <sighs> Winning the Taste Master, it's a dream come true for anybody who has a passion for cooking and baking. Even if you don't have a passion and you enter this competition, it's going to be so addictive. Win or lose, it doesn't matter because the exposure that I got on Taste Master has been phenomenal. Who will influence the nation with their creative bakes? Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. Those are my scones. They look a bit hard on the top, but they actually mustard that oh, I added they, just for added flavor. They feel super light. Oh, do, oh, they? do they? Yeah. Oh, oh, they do. Okay. <laughs> All right then. Uh, <laughs> All righty then. Uh, is there a reason why you're whispering at us? No, I seem to have been whispering like since two hours ago. No, yeah, your, your voice has gotten quieter and quieter. And then it automatically, you know, draws you into whispers. Yeah, as well. then we also whisper. Uh, I think I think it's a coping mechanism. So I think it's. I've only discovered it today. I was, <laughs> I was two days years old when I discovered that. I whisper when I'm sort of into things. Yeah. Bye, Renuka. Good luck. I have grown to love baking because I think that. The fact that you can take someone back to their childhood and their memories that are very fond is so special and I like putting a smile on someone's face. The quiche seems like it is set and the pastry is also brown and it looks crispy. Happy with that. Muli Renuka, one hour left. Woo! Four hours gone. Yes, guys, last hour, keep pushing. I am trying to 
stop this orange river from flowing. If that liquid goes down, you get a soggy bottom and nobody loves a soggy bottom. I love spice and I just wanted to bring a vegetarian element um, to the bakes today. Look at us, just in time for croffin folding. By the way, this is the first time I make a croffin. Rolling it so that when it expands, it's um, like a cute little spiral shape. I see the, the lamination, I can see it. Yeah, it actually looks quite pretty, So it pretty, looks eh? like you did get some, some layers in oh, there. So that's hopefully, great. Hopefully it'll be nice and light. Last minutes in the Taste Master kitchen. I just want to get a few things together. So excited. Contestants, everything needs to be out of the oven and on your station, ready to be packed. You got one minute left, everybody. One minute. Double checking scones with paneer filling. It's the very last second. I take out my coffins and they are big. Ten, Ten nine, nine, eight, seven, seven, seven six, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Stop baking. Yay! <laughs> I think that Moletwa and I did a great job today considering that we had five hours and we had five bakes. So I'm just wishing her the best of luck. We did it go. We both winners. The 150,000 rand from Capitec is within my reach. I can, I can actually feel it. I can taste it. I can see it in my bank account. I really pushed today and I didn't actually know if I was going to finish or not. So it's crazy that I actually got it done. <laughs> Looking back at my journey, there was a lot of trials and tribulations. There's definitely been moments in the Taste Master competition where I thought, I, it's a wrap for me. But then here I am. I've definitely learned a lot about myself. I think one of the biggest things is that pastry isn't my only strength, I actually excel in savory foods as well as perseverance. The early part of the show, it was a bit difficult because uh, she was in elimination rounds several times and uh, so it was a bit tense for us, but I have confidence in my daughter. Muli has always wanted to be a chef and the competition has made her grow in confidence and it will allow her to reach her dreams. Muli, this is what you've always wanted and we're confident that you're going to make it right to the top. For Muli to win this competition is going to mean quite a lot because it will further her career and prove to her and to us that she is in the right field. Muli, I'm very proud of you, so is the whole family. We hope you will keep on going with your confidence and that you bring it home. Hey Muli, I know you are probably really stressed right now, but just keep your head down, stay focused. I know you can do this. You are amazing. You make amazing food and congratulations for getting this far. I can't wait to see how it all goes. Going into the finals, I'm not worried about Renuka. It all comes down to taste and I'm just going to stay true to myself. So may the best taste master win. After packing up and saying goodbye to the Taste Master Kitchen, it's back to Vatoklov Wine Estate to put the final touches on their bakes. Walking into the restaurant with my cooler box all packed with my bakes, I am focused, determined and ready to start decorating and finishing off my bakes. Welcome back to Chorus, guys. Thank you. Thank you. How was your preparations? Long. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the hard work is done, but we're not there yet. We want to see beautifully presented bikes. Remember, ladies, you have invited us to your dream cafe. You will have one hour to finish your bakes before you present. Well, you can start in three, two, one. Get going. Good luck, guys. Time starts, and the first thing I want to get on is my shoe buns. With these shoe buns, I am going to pipe my marula ganache and my orange gel in there. I just have to work really fast today to make sure all of the elements are on the plate. I top it with my paneer burji and some sour cream 
coriander, cumin, and it's ready to go. I am now working on my quiche, add in some micro herbs and then chopped tomatoes that have salt, pepper and olive oil in it. I'm very happy with the way my quiche is looking. I do not think that I have the edge over Molly in terms of plating. She won the fine dining challenge, so I'm a little bit nervous about my plating today. I'm taking my crackers out of the microwave. I brush them with some syrup and I'm putting on some desiccated coconut. I start piping my uh, cinnamon cream onto my cinnamon and pecan cake. I'm loving the look of this. You sort of almost there. Uh, I still have one more dish to plate up and I'm still finishing up the cupcakes. See, these aren't normal scones. What, what are they flavored with? So they are savory scones. Yep. And then there's a paneer fuji on the top. And when you bake at home, who do you bake for? I bake for my husband, yeah. uh, my family and friends, and I bake for myself, because cake is life, eh? Yes. <laughs> Never know, maybe, maybe you get to earn the dream cafe after all sometime. Ah, uh, true, yeah. yeah. I see, are these crackling buns? Your crackling buns? Yes, and they are. what is the filling? Uh, the filling is a marula liqueur ganache and a orange gel. And cinnamon buns? These are actually Ku Sister inspired cruffins. Oh wow, there you go. Nice. Do you get good Ku Sisters in Joburg? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to offend nobody, but no. <laughs> and how often do you get to bake? I just finished my degree, so I am staying at home and working on my business. So I do bake quite often. What was your degree in? Um, anthropology and psychology. <sighs> no, so baking is a break from all of that, sir. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I actually did. That's actually one of the reasons. <laughs> but good luck, it looks amazing. Thank you so much. I'm looking at these craftsmen and I'm feeling like they are a little bit underbaked. So I'm going to cut out the middle of them and put my spiced coconut filling in there because we know what happens to people that it's an undercooked food. Contestants, you have 10 minutes left. The finish line is very close, guys. Keep pushing. I'm frantically trying to put together my bagel so that I have a fifth item to serve up. I cut my hand for the third time and I'm really frustrated with myself. I don't have time to be dealing with all these medical issues. I still have to decorate my gulab jamun cake. All of my baked items rose beautifully with royal baking powder. Time is running out, I'm scrambling and I'm trying to shave on some Burungas cheese. That's not working. I cut it up, throw it on there with some rocket. 10, 10 9, 8, 8 7, 6, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's it, ladies. Time is up. Your bake is complete. Woo! Well done. Good effort. Time's up. I am feeling Honestly, I'm feeling relieved. I'm happy that everything is out. I am super proud of each and every bake that I put out. I actually couldn't believe that I did them. Next up, all that's left is for the judges to taste their bakes one last time. So judges, I mean, even after six hours, still a rush and a panic to finish. And so I believe that we'll see the best versions of these two contestants that we've seen thus far. Mm -hmm. From a heritage perspective and from a creative perspective, I believe we're in for a treat. I mean, Bertis, what did you catch from the last hour? I mean, Sure, so, so Muli really pushed it to the last second. Uh, you know, there's a bit of homage everywhere. You know, melt that, kusasish, you know, also a variety of bakes, something with yeast, something chocolatey, something savory. I mm -hmm. think it's, it's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm and very different from the two bakers. Renuka's also touched a lot on her heritage and in her bake she's used spices and she has a, a really great understanding for flavor. So mm. I have high hopes for both of the flavors that they're going to deliver. Right, let's bring on Muli. Going into the tasting, I am a little bit nervous about my cruffins, but with everything else, I think I'm okay. Finishing off with a big smile. We love to see that. I am really relieved that everything is out. I wasn't sure in the last second. So you had a few accidents today, but we're proud of you for finishing the task at hand. Please talk us through your inspiration. This is a rainbow nation, so I've grown up with so many people and come across so many people in terms of culture. So over here, we have a 
most poliki inspired bagel with a koro confit, a cream cheese, as well as smoked snook. Then we have a quiche, which is a samosa inspired spiced chicken quiche with a sour cream on top and a danya chutney. And then we have a cruffin with a spiced coconut filling. I have some chocolate brownies for you, which is spiced with cardamom and has some almonds and cream on top. And then in the middle, we have some shoe buns with a marula liqueur ganache and some orange gel. Okay, Muli, if you'll leave us to it, thank you very much. Awesome stuff, enjoy. Thank you. This is out of the ordinary to not have the judges critique me right then. Then my mind is racing. My heart is in my stomach. I am nervous. I think we all knew she'd done a lot in five hours, but only when you start tasting, you realize how complex her flavors are. I was worried about the bagel, but actually has a beautiful chew on it, that coral confit, <laughs> learning. Actually was a lovely sweet flavor. I like the combination of bagel and jam and cream cheese. I didn't really get the fish component. The quiche, the pastry, very dense, very tough. Actually, I think she might have overworked that. In terms of the filling, maybe for some a little over seasoned, but I think I'd, I like the counterbalance with the sour cream. Good savory components. And as well, when I looked at the plates and everything together, it really reminded me of like a like a really cool, like, like an Otani morning tea. Like, you know, there's a bit of savory, a bit of sweet. Yeah. It's a tradition of sadly sort of falling by the wayside. Mm. Uh, what I really enjoyed was the, um, on, on these little crackling buns. So obviously it's a shoe bun with, with a bit of sublet paste on, and it, they were pretty well made. A little bit, little bit dense in a way. Uh, you know, it's the ganache is also quite chilled, mm. it's also quite dense. But the flavor combination is really good. And mm. I think it's quite technical for a baker at this level to get right. Absolutely. The cruffins were unfortunate because she needed to allocate more time to it. Firstly, you see the layers, which is, you know, a winner. Then you bite into it and you realize, okay, she just need a little bit more proving time, a little mm. bit more baking time, because you can see that the center has been removed, probably on the assumption that we might have underbaked slightly, mm. taken it out, filled it with a delicious, but maybe a little bit unrelated coconut filling. But I had high hopes for that. Croissants call for time, but she's to take that on. The bravery, my word. Absolutely, I think she definitely pushed herself. My mind is really on the craffins. Those things, yeah, they let me down. Everything else, I really have no clue. It could be anyone's game. What was your opinion on the brownies? You know, Zola, one of my all-time favorite flavor combinations is chocolate and cardamom. If we look at it, it, it reminds me a little bit of Middle Eastern inspiration, nuts and rose petals, uh, cardamom flavor comes through nicely. I do like the texture of the brownies, the chewiness is really like a, um, and it's, it's something that, that, that can be so bad if it's made badly, but in this case, the brownie falls with inacceptable realms. <laughs> <laughs> Acceptable. It, it deserves a second bite. Fantastic. Hello, Renuka. Hello, judges. I'm sure you must be feeling some sense of relief and maybe a little bit of sadness. You know, the journey has come to an end. I'm not sad <laughs> about the journey. <laughs> she didn't whisper that. <laughs> what are you most excited about as tasting? As an Indian, I eat curry six times a week. So I just wanted to reflect that in all of my bakes and my cooks. So I've added spice to every um, element of the bake today. So for savouries, I've got a savoury scone. It's topped with a paneer bhuji, and then I've got a dollop of sour cream. The second savoury is a spicy chicken and mushroom quiche. For my sweet bakes, I love a milk tart, so I've done a cinnamon and pecan cake, and then I've done a cinnamon pastry cream for the top, so to make the milk tart. My gulab jamun inspired cake. And then the last bake is something very close to my heart. I love coffee and I love chocolate. And I thought what better way to incorporate it into a little cupcake, something sweet, something decadent and looks beautiful. So it's a chocolate cupcake with a cream cheese coffee icing and coffee syrup at the top. Thank you, Renuka. We'll get tasting, we'll see you later. Thank you, thank you so much. Doing this five hour bake was such a challenge and now not to know what the judges are saying is even more nerve wracking. I've done all I could do. I am proud of everything that I have put up on the table today, but I'm hoping also that there are no errors with any of the dishes. No, so I think just off the bat, I love the flow 
of the taste, you know? Scone in the beginning, I think it was well baked. I liked the flavors, it was enticing, but it took me on to the next step, which was the quiche. I felt like the fillings of the quiche was in great balance. The base may be a little bit more heat on that, I would like, but no big faults there. I really enjoyed the cupcake, to be honest with you. I think a lot could be said for, for bakers who can bake a great cupcake. Mm. It's understanding something small that must be delicious in one bite. The cake itself and the, the topping, the frosting on top, we both executed really well. The gulab jamun, we did have an experience of the authentic version, and this is an interpretation of that. And my goodness, is it great. Mm. An eggless cake, but the crumb on that is so light. It's very flavorful. Soaking it in that cardamom syrup. Also, such a beautiful sight to look at. Very well executed. And her other cake also, I could definitely get the reference of milk tart there. She got a great bake on that as well. A delight to eat. It's, it's all very balanced. Yeah. I think she had a good day. I think so too. So when these guys open up their dream bake shops, I think we'll be there. Oh, we will. <laughs> right. right. We have a very big decision to make. Now, we all know that they both are very deserving, but one of them is going to take the title. Are you ready, Bartis? I am. Fritz? Let's discuss. Yep. The ladies have done an incredible job. They are so talented, and I think it's going to be a very, very tight one. So congratulations to them, and may the best person win. I think that the judges have a really tough task ahead of them. I and mean, you can see all the hard work that's gone into every dish. It's just phenomenal. We've been very impressed with today's finalists. Electrical Industries is proud to be a part of this partnership. We encourage the entrepreneur and young up-and-coming chefs who would like to open their own business. Our main core is commercial food service equipment. Proudly supporting entrepreneurs, Capitec Business is giving our winner a 150,000 Rand capital boost. Capitec decided to partner with Tastemaster SA because we believe in growing small businesses. It was a perfect opportunity for us to really help home cooks grow their businesses and build their careers within this industry. Up next, who will be crowned the Tastemaster and walk away with more than 400,000 Rand in prizes? Better never rests. So be the star to take your baking to the next level with Capitec. Who will influence the nation with their creative bakes? Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. you have had a marathon of a final bake, but you did it. It has certainly been an honor and a privilege to walk this journey with both of you. What has been the main takeaway for you? For me, it's about perseverance. We were put into challenges and elimination rounds that we were not familiar with, a lot of us. Pate on crew is going to be a nightmare for me forever. Uh, but it's just about keeping your head up and doing the best you can and persevering. Molly, for you? Yeah, I think it's been a roller coaster um, for me personally, and it's been very difficult to keep my head up, but I've gone in every single bake and had a positive attitude. And also just to take myself out of a, like any comfort zone and just do it. Oh, well said. And today itself was a roller coaster. I mean, my word. Mm. I mean, we couldn't have ended at a better place with a better person. I mean, what a venue. Bartercliff Wine Estate, Chorus Restaurant, and of course, the legendary Bertus Basson. Thank you for joining us today, Bertus. Guys, I must say, uh, both your bakes were technical. It was delicious. It was well executed. And if that is the future of South African baking, I think we're in safe hands. Thank you so much. Well done. Thank you, Baptist. Yeah, and the beautiful thing is you both showcased your own personality so well today. Muli, you showcased all flavors and textures and techniques, you know, that even pushed your own capacity. You know, Coral Confite, I mean, <laughs> where are you from? <laughs> that is beautiful and, and you know, and it's and it spoke to who you are and the and the guts that you have and the you know, the willingness to take on challenges to stretch yourself. Well done, awesome. we're proud of you. Renuka, so classic. We loved, all loved that cupcake. I mean, I mean, I know it's your favorite, but we could taste it's your favorite. And then taking us on a spice route, beautiful. 
beautiful flavor. It was a delicious bake, well done. And just a reminder of what you were baking for today. It was 150,000 rand in cash from Capitech Business to further your career because better never rests. Furthermore, you will receive 100,000 rand to spend with Samsung, 100,000 rand worth of KitchenAid equipment, and a brand new blast chiller from Electrical Industries Online worth 65,000 rand. How cool is that? Ooh. And on that note, I want to thank our sponsors. Thank you to Royal Baking Powder, Clover. Thank you, Capitec. Thank you, Samsung. Thank you, KitchenAid. Thank you, Electrical Industries Online. Not only did you change the lives of these 14 bakers, they've allowed them to inspire a nation of bakers and cooks out there. You know, it's, it's what South Africa needs. It brings different cultures together, brings people together. And so this is more than a baking show. And you guys have made that possible, so thank you. Thank you. Round of applause for the sponsors. <laughs> Joining us today from our sponsors to help hand over the prizes are from Royal Baking Powder, Tamarin Saupela. From Capitec, Juanita Sali. From KitchenAid, Razan Simons Peter, as well as Gunther Fortune. And from Electrical Industries Online, Bernie Latimer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, without further ado, it's time for the big moment. Time to announce who the winner of season five of the Taste Master SA is. And the winner is. Um, it has been such an amazing journey for me. I've watched season one to four as a viewer. I've entered the viewers competition to win a KitchenAid and never won one. <laughs> never have I ever thought that I would be a contestant on Tastemaster and actually win season five. To everybody, the production team, to the judges, to our guest judges, it's just been so amazing. Thank you so much. And to my family, my husband, Kalesh, my mom, my sister, my brother, and all my extended family, they already said to me that they were so proud of me being in the top two. And I'm already a winner in their eyes. So I leave here grateful, uh, humbled by this experience. And I'm just gonna go out there. The sky is the limit. I've got so much of confidence now. Thank you so much to everyone and to the sponsors as well. I am just so grateful. And to Moletwa, Thank you. Thank you for okay. running this marathon with me that we did. And she's an amazing baker, and I wish her everything Thank of you. the best. Thank you so much. Well said. Well done. Congratulations to both of you. Um, I am so grateful for this experience. It's been super humbling. And Renouk, I'm very, very happy for you. She has done so well throughout this competition that it's very, very well deserved. And I'm gonna call you after this competition for some flavor tips, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very, very grateful. Thank you guys for the opportunity. Thank you, sponsors, as well. Let's hear it one more time for the winner of season five of the Taste Master SA, Renuka! I'm clapping for myself. <laughs> now, Renuka, now. I'm beyond excited. It hasn't even sunk in yet. I'm so grateful for this opportunity and I just want to thank everybody that supported me. I actually didn't think that I would be the winner of season five. Yay!
I'm so happy for Renuka. It's well deserved. She's done so well throughout the competition and I can't wait to see what comes next for me. The sky's the limit. I am definitely looking forward to buying more Samsung products and KitchenAid appliances. I hope my sister's not watching because she wants some as well. The 150,000 brand from Capitech, thank you Capitech, is definitely going to change my life. I want to start my business and when I am successful, I just want to employ women and upskill them. Be inspired by Renuka's journey and stand a chance of winning 50,000 Rand for your business from the Tastemaster SA and Capitech business. Reply to the competition post on the Tastemaster SA social media pages with a video sharing your small business story and how this Capitech boost will further the growth of your business. Use hashtag Better Never Rests and hashtag the Tastemaster SA and tag at Capitech Bank and at Tastemaster SA say if entering on Instagram. You can also enter by WhatsApping your video to 065-672-7127. Entries close Sunday, 28 July. T's and C's apply. The Tastemaster SA was proudly brought to you in association with Royal Baking Powder. From our family to yours, the Tastemaster SA, made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.